Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing fine. I welcome you all to the SRBPS online classes. My name is Parnika and I am here to teach you one of the most interesting subject which is said to be computer. Nowadays computers are used in each and every field. So it is important for us to also know how the computer works and how it is important for us. So the topics which we will be covering in this video is what is a computer system and how does it works. So stay tuned, we will be moving towards the slides. So as you can see the name of your chapter is a computer system. In this we will see what a computer system is and how does it works. So the first thing which you can see is what is a computer system. Computer. Computer is said to be a smart electronic machine. Why computer is said to be a smart one? Do you know? Just because it never ever makes any mistake. Computer never ever makes any mistake and can do a variety of work. Whichever work we ask, it is always ready to do it. That is why computer is said to be a smart one. For example, if you do any work without anyone's help and do it very quickly and easily, then your teacher says you, you are a smart boy or says you are a smart girl. So in the similar way, computer does its works without anyone's help and it does any variety of work very quickly and very easily. That is why computer is said to be a smart one. The next says computer is an electronic one. Why does a computer is said to be an electronic one? Just because it works on electricity. Computer works on electricity. That is why computer is said to be an electronic one. And why machine? Just like any other machine, if we ask them to do some work, they do the work for us. In the similar way, if we give a command to a computer to do something, it will, de it will do that particular work for us. But if we do not say anything to him to do, it will never ever do it themselves. Similar like you, your mother might be having a washing machine at your home. Your mother gives a command to washing machine to clean the clothes. So the washing machine does the same. But it has ever happened that the washing machine had cleaned the clothes itself without giving instructions? No, never. So whenever we give a command to the machine or to the computer, then only they will do our work. How does a computer look? You might have seen at your home or at the lab in the school. So these are the basic parts of the computer. This is the parts which are usually needed when we want to work on a computer. You can see it is a monitor. Monitor, monitor is just like a TV screen. It is similar to a TV screen which we have at our home. You can see a keyboard. Keyboard has many keys into it which help us in typing. Then we have a mouse. This is not the mouse which you have at your home. This is a different one. This mouse help us in clicking, help us in pointing something. Then we have a CPU. CPU is said to be the brain of the computer. All the calculations, all the programming is being done here inside the CPU. Next, how does a computer system works? There are two main components which are needed for a computer system to work very accurately without making any mistake. So the two components which are very much necessary for a computer system to work is number one hardware and number two software. Once again I would like to repeat there are two main components which are very much necessary for a computer system to work. Number one is the hardware and number two is the software. So first we will be studying about what a hardware is and what are the different types of hardware. Then we will be moving forward towards the software. Okay, so what is a hardware? The hardware is said to be the things which we can touch and which we can see 
with our naked eyes are said to be the hardware once again i would like to repeat the parts of a computer which you can see and which you can touch which you can feel are said to be the hardware means they are physically available there physically present there so they are said to be the hardware the hardware are basically used to enter the information or the question which you want to ask from the computer the hardware are helped help us to store information into it the hardware help us to process the information and the hardware is only used to display the data which we want so there are many hardware devices but few of them which are mainly needed we'll be studying about them here today these hardware are very much important and they also displays the output or the result for the question which we are going to ask from them so based on the functionalities the hardware is divided into four important parts once again depending upon their functionalities the hardware is divided into four important parts the number one part is known as input devices with the with which we can input the data or the instructions which we want then we have the processing devices processing devices process our data for example using a keyboard if i enter 2 plus 2 so the info, the instruction goes into the processing device processing device process our information being given to it and then the output device displays the output or the result for example using an input device i have given the instruction 2 plus 2 so the processing device will process it and will give the answer to the output device and output device will display it as 4 and if we want to store it the store the information which i have given to the computer i can store it in the storage devices okay so we will move we will be moving forward with the input devices okay so here you are able to see input devices hardware devices that are used to provide data and instructions to the computer are called as input devices once again the devices which are used to give information or the instruction or the data to the computer are said to be an इनपुट डिवाइसेज मैं बताना चाहूँगी इनपुट डिवाइसेज वो डिवाइसेज होती हैं जो हमारे कंप्यूटर को डेटा देती हैं या इंस्ट्रक्शन देती है मतलब उन्हें बताती है कि उन्हें क्या करना है आगे वो सारी चीज़ें होती हैं इनपुट डिवाइसेज सम ऑफ द बेसिक इनपुट डिवाइसेज आर माउस की बोर्ड एंड माइक्रोफोन वंस अगेन द मेनली नीडेड इनपुट डिवाइस आर माउस की बोर्ड and microphone mouse a mouse is a pointing device because it helps us to point at things it is also known as a clicking device because with the help of a mouse we can click on things so basically a mouse is a pointing device which is used to point at things select things or move the objects which are present on the screens object you can understand with the help of the icons okay so if we want to move something if we want to select something or if we want to point at something or if we want to open any of the program in the program computer then you will be using a mouse so mouse has two buttons that is said to be a left button or a right button both the buttons have different functionalities to perform then we have a scroll wheel a scroll wheel is present in between the both of the buttons so the scroll wheel help us to move up of the page and down of the page if we want to move upside of the page then we will be using a scroll wheel in the upper direction and if you want to go to the lower portion of the page or at the down of the page then we will be using a scroll wheel at the down side moving it towards the down side so these are the basic functionalities of the parts of a mouse the next comes 
is the keyboard keyboard is also one of the most important hardware and an input device which is very much necessary for a computer to have a comp a keyboard is the one which is used to enter text and commands into the computer so if you want to enter something if you want to write a text or write a command which is to be given to a computer then we'll be using a keyboard you know what the basic keyboard has 104 total number of keys into it how many total number of keys 104 the number of keys can vary from keyboard to keyboard but the basic keyboard would always be having 104 keys into it keys are also said to be the buttons present on the keyboard these keys are divided into different categories the basic category I would be talking about is the alphabet keys. As in English, we have 26 alphabets. In the similar way, in the keyboard also, we have 26 alphabets. And the next is the number key. Number key here starts from 0 to 9. Okay, once again, the number key starts from 0 to 9. So we'll be starting it as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So only 10 keys are there but the keys are starting from 0 to 9. Then we have symbol keys. There are different symbols like comma, inverted comma, question mark, brackets smaller than sign, less than sign, greater than sign. So these are all included in the symbols. The next we have is the arrow keys. So there are four arrow keys moving upward, downward and both the sideways. So these are the basic different categories of keys present on the keyboard. If we talk about each key has a different functions to perform and if we make a combination of two keys they also have a different function to perform so keyboard is also very much important part of a computer which help us as in input device so the next input device is the microphone you can see it on the screen it is similar to the mic which you use in your school at the assembly but it is a sleek one once we use it with the computer so the functionality of both the mic and the microphone is one and the same. So a microphone is used to enter audio in a computer. It is used to enter audio into a computer. So it is used to record your voice if in case you want to sing a song and you want to record it. You want to listen it afterwards. So what you can do is you can use the microphone, connect it to the computer and you can sing your song and record it. And the other day if you want to listen to it you can go ahead open the file and you can listen it easily so the microphone helps you to record voice as well as sounds nowadays you can do voice calling video calling using many other softwares so if you use a computer for voice calling or video calling then you can any day use a microphone and it would be really helpful for you people I hope you have understood all the concepts. If in case something is missed, do not worry. There is a video for you. You can go once again and view this video. And stay tuned with me for the next concepts. In the next class, we'll be going forward with what are the processing device and what are the output devices. Bye-bye.